Okay, the topic, African leaders detected navigating entity design and prioritization for systemic outcomes was first of all uh, an inspiration that I got while taking a long drive from inside in Fontainebleau, uh, heading to Paris, going through the French countryside. And I noticed the similarities with Africa. The second part is that tete a tete is a French phrase for one-on-one -on -one discussion. Africa, looking back, we've always had the oral tradition of folklore, uh, uh, stories and discussions in the open spaces. So tete a tete is a one-on-one -on -one discussion. In the course of my career, I've also engaged leaders and I found out that they have issues of designing entities in a way that will be sustainably performing and also in terms of setting priorities among conflicting opportunities and allocating resources. So that's what brought about the topic uh, African leaders tete a tete, navigating, because it takes a lot of effort to work it out, navigating entity design and also prioritizing for a purpose, that purpose being systemic outcomes. Everything has been intricately <laughs> orchestrated. The color is beige gray. Gray being if you look at the designs, it's a distance between black and white. Many people do not know that Africa is multiracial, so hopefully this takes us to that space. Then another thing is that gray symbolizes conservatism, richness, and mystery. Many people refer to Africa as the dark continent. It's mysterious to some people, they would like to know. Then if you look at the alphabets of the topic of the book, the main theme, and African leaders' tete, tete is written in blood red. Blood red symbolizing sacrifice. We know about the Africa's sacrifice in the transatlantic slave trade and trans-Saharan slave trade, the various wars and bloodsheds. Red also symbolizes passion, danger, religious fervor. Africans are very passionate people, and we also have royalty, they call it red blood, <laughs> as in terms of all these kingdoms in Africa, which uh, were victims. Some of them were partners and some of them were victims of the slave trade. So that's what the color and the alphabets theme symbolizes. Then there is the pendulum, which is a dramatic pendulum. After the Newton's theory of motion, you will see that the three pendulum on the left hand side, they are silver. The book has been designed to talk to leaders at three levels of leadership, individual leaders, corporate leaders, and jurisdictional leaders. And then the book has been designed as a discussion with the author, with leaders at these levels. So the right pendulum is the author, reflecting the concepts in the book. That's why it's reflecting the color red and knocking on the three spheres of leadership. And the last section of the book is in line with this title, the momentum, which has to do with action. Africans, we talk a lot, we get very little done. So this is to move us into action by the theories that have been so presented. So whether it be the logo, whether it be the words, whether it be the diagram, it's all linked to what the book is talking about. Leveraging on the words of Ambassador Mbeni Sefue, who graciously wrote the foreword, he said the African Leaders tete a tete is more than a book. It is a manual for leaders who want to play their part in Africans' transformation to the Africa we want, whether at the individual level, at the organizational level, or at the jurisdictional level. I will add it to say it is also a discussion with the author on two concepts that were proposed in the book, the ED4SP and the SWOT Plus looking at Agenda 2063, our collectively defined path for Africa's transformation over 50 years. We've done 10 years. We've had some wins, we've had some losses. The next 40 years, how is it going to be? So the book is our own individual contributions to that journey at multiple levels as leaders of Africa. African leaders, leaders in diaspora, African diaspora across the world, African leaders within Africa, leaders of 
institutions, corporates, organizations, and governments in Africa, and also leaders of organizations that are foreign but operating in Africa or having partnerships with organizations in Africa, and also for students and faculty of institutions of learning that are developing Africa's future leaders so that they will have this uh, grasp of the concept. It's all about the Africa we want, a futuristic Africa, but not negating the past and looking at the present. There's so much one can learn about a country, about people, by driving into a city, whether by road, by train, or by bus. And I have had the privilege of traveling around Africa. I've been to like one third of the countries in Africa, and I've gone to some countries in Middle East, America, in um, Asia, and also some parts of Europe. And I always love to travel along the roads, take the train, have stops at the stations, talk to people, exercise. There's so much one can learn observing people. Another aspect of my learning to get this book is from the various sessions I've had the privilege of serving in executive capacity, non-executive capacity, and playing advisory roles to organizations and working with people. I've served as a jurist on various panels, and I've also served on boards and on think tanks. I found out conversations that you have with people off the timetable, outside during breaks, asking questions, relating in a very non-confrontational manner, peer-to-peer -peer conversations can be truly, truly inspiring and insightful. I've also had the privilege of education that is case-based, and we have had many case studies in my schooling in the University of Phoenix at INSEAD Business School and also at the ISPI International Conferences that gives us opportunity to engage and relate with people who are leaders of those entities and major consultants that serve these big major corporates and governments. Given that Africa is so richly endowed naturally in terms of natural resources and human capacity, it will be profoundly gratifying if in the next few years we could have some leaders reference the African leaders tete a tete as a source of an inspiration that they got for an initiative that they introduced that's had a lot of impact on the people, the environment, and the governments. Because when these systems work, when companies work, they can pay taxes. When they pay taxes, government has money. And when government has money, it offers services. And when companies work and they're successful, people get jobs and people's lives are impacted. That would be fantastic if it happens in the future because of an inspiration from this book in a few years to come.